here has uh, graced our stage many times, and we always learn useful and compelling information from him, so tonight will be no exception. You probably know that Tim heads a local law firm. Perhaps you've heard him on the radio filling in for the likes of Mark Davis on occasion. I tune in and hear that sometimes. Tim is here tonight in his capacity as chair as uh, chair of the Tarrant County GOP, and he's going to educate us about the GOP convention system process. How many of you have attended a convention here in Texas? Pretty good. Do you all need to learn something more about it so we can be more effective when we're there? Well, come on up stage, up to the stage, Tim. Give a warm welcome to Tim. Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you? Oh, there we go. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you, uh, Julie, for inviting me. I always appreciate when you invite me. I especially appreciate it when it means I get to miss an hour and a half of figure skating. So that's all that's been on in my house now for five days. I can't wait to get out of the house. I will, anybody need me to come paint, mow the yard, let me know until figure skating is over. Um, before I talk to you a little bit about the convention process and all the different aspects of it, let me talk to you uh, just about the transition from my administration, if you will, and Darl's. So everybody knows, Darl, stand up, but uh, everybody knows Darl, of course, let's give him a big round of applause. And take my, play. Uh, my sentence, I mean, term ends on June the 10th, and uh, Darl will take over then. I want you to know how I'm handling that with Darl. Um, this will be a seamless transition. Um, I will be working with him every step of the way. And I will tell you, Jen Hall did the same with me. Um, she was, uh, I know in years past we may have had some weird turnovers, but I'll give Darl every email I have, every phone number, every contact, every donor list, and uh, we'll be working together. Uh, in fact, uh, some news that I just shared with Darl, which I just got about an hour and a half before I got here. So thanks to uh, those of you who came to the Lincoln Day Dinner, our sponsors, thank you, Julie and Fred, for coming. You know, I've tried to work with the Tea Party during the time that I've been in there. She's worked with us. It's been fantastic. It's been a good partnership. I know that will continue with Darl. And uh, we just got the news based on all the numbers. So the Tarrant County GOP will be fully funded through the next Lincoln Day Dinner. So Darl gets to start with all the money. <laughs> We all know early voting starts for the primary February 20th, runs through March 2nd, election day March 6th. Then we have our local elections uh, on May 5th, and then the primary runoff, uh, which we will have this year. There's a couple of judicial races that have five candidates in them. Um, we've got land commissioner race, which uh, we're going to see a runoff, so we'll have our primary runoff on May 22nd. Um, so that's it for the elections. Lot, lots going on. Uh, it's never boring at the GOP. It's kind of interesting. Um, everybody followed, I'm sure, the Russ Casey saga, right? Yes. So Russ Casey released a statement to the Star Telegram letting them know that he could not possibly have a fair election because of me. Um, blamed me, said it was me, said I wouldn't have a fair one. Well, at the same time, there's a group of people that are blaming me for not throwing him off the ballot yet. So. It's just kind of how it works when you're the GOP chair. I know you all have seen um, what has gone on in the last couple of days with Glenn Whitley and Connie Burton. And uh, so I've been in contact with Connie, talked to Connie today. Um, this is not the way we need to be doing things. Uh, this is not good for her re-election in November. And uh, I hope we will put a stop to this uh, attacking our state senator who is going to be running as a Democrat in the fall, regardless of what you believe about your position on this or that. Hey, I, I, I'm sure here in this room, we are all for property tax reform. Our property taxes are through the roof. I'm for it. And this stuff where we're attacking our state senator is ridiculous. It needs to stop. So, um, all right, convention stuff. Let's get to that. So how many of you, again, raise your hand if you've been to a state convention? So that's probably about half, maybe a little more than half. Um, why do you go to a state convention? There's really, there's five main reasons. So the state convention this year is June 14th through the 16th. 
It's in San Antonio. So two, we have it every two years in Texas. It's the largest political convention uh, in the world. Uh, two years ago, it was in Dallas. The previous two before that, going back four and six years ago, was here in Fort Worth. You may know the Democrats are bringing their state convention to Tarrant County. We're taking ours to Bear County, so two can play that game. And uh, here are the five reasons. The five reasons to go to the state GOP convention are one, it is, and, and probably the most important, although that's arguable, it's to be part of the process to choose our platform. And so, how many of you, and this is going to put some of you on the spot, uh, elected officials or candidates excluded, I don't want you to get in trouble with this, how many of you have read the platform? Okay, that's a lot of you. I would tell you most elected officials in the state have not read the platform. And the platform is pretty convoluted and pretty lengthy, but last time for the first time in, in at least that I know of, in, in many years, at least 10, 12 years, everybody there, all the delegates had a chance to vote plank by plank on the platform, which instead of just one big here, vote for this, yes or no, everybody gets to vote on it individually, which I think is a really good thing. And this is what we use to keep our elected officials uh, to hold them accountable. This is our chance to tell them this is what we expect you to work on and you to do. And they don't always do it, but I will tell you the awareness of the platform uh, has certainly been raised in recent years. And we need this room, everybody here, to go to San Antonio and be part of this. We need, and if you don't, what happens? Well, then you don't know what's going to happen and they're going to pass things you wish they didn't pass and we're going to have a platform that doesn't represent Tea Party values. And we all know what this says right here. I don't know how you can be a Republican and not be for these things. This seems pretty simple, easy to understand, but we get a lot of stuff that goes on that doesn't reflect these values. So we need Tea Party people there, no doubt about it. I hope you will, will try to attend. So that, that's in San Antonio again, June 14th to the 16th. So that's number one, be a part of the process to choose a platform. So the convention meets every two years. In every two years, you go vote for the state GOP chairman or chairwoman and the vice chairman or chairwoman, which you'll have a chance to do that again uh, in June. Also something, and this room is really informed and educated, you know, Sometimes all of us on the inside, we think that everybody knows the stuff we know. If you knocked on a door and said, what's an SREC? 99% um, of people that reliably vote Republican every primary, every November, have no earthly idea what that is. But it, it, it can absolutely have a big influence on the way our state GOP is run. So SREC stands for State Republican Executive Committee. Each Senate district has two, a man and a woman, and you in Tarrant County, so we have four Senate districts that either cover Tarrant County or have part of Tarrant County. Senate District 9, Kelly Hancock has that seat. Senate District 10, Connie Burke has that seat. 12, that's Jay Nelson, and 22, that's Brian Burwell. So we have eight SREC representatives. There's 31 state Senate districts in Texas. Each one has a man and a woman. Um, you get to vote on that every two years. And that's, that's really an unheralded position, but it's an important position. So that's another reason that you want to go there. You also can learn how to be a better activist. You can learn how to run campaigns. You can learn how to block walk better. You can learn how to knock on doors better. There's all kinds of seminars and things to go to that can help you do a better job, whether you're a precinct chair, whether you're an elected official, whether you want to run for office, whether you just like knocking on doors, writing checks to candidates, whether you just blog, whatever it is you do, they usually have something there that can help you grow and improve in what you're doing. And we need more people like the ones in this room to be involved and to go to those things. And so that's another uh, important thing you can do there. Fifth thing is build relationships. And so I'll tell you, I think building relationships in politics is the thing that grassroots activists tend to miss the most. And we build relationships with each other, but we don't build relationships with a lot of people. And I can tell you, you catch a whole lot more um, with honey than you can with vinegar. And sometimes you've got to have the vinegar. 
because sometimes people need a vinegar, but you can catch more flies with honey. And building the relationships, that's a place you can go do it. You can meet the elected officials that you don't know. You can get to know them better. And there's all kinds of events. There's pro-life banquets, and there's fiscal responsibility banquets, and there's all kinds of things you can go to to make relationships. And in politics, I think everybody in the district knows that relationships are key. So those, I think, are the five important reasons to be there. There's others. Uh, you have different ideas as to why you need to be there, but if we don't show up, if we're not there to have our voices heard, then we don't get what we want on the platform, and that's never a good thing. So, how do you get there? What do you do to get to the state convention? Well, it starts on election night. So, May 6th, Tuesday, May 6th, March 6th, excuse me, Tuesday, March 6th is primary election night. And here in Tarrant County, we have precinct conventions at your voting precinct on voting day. For those who vote early, uh, you may not know this, if you were to vote on voting day, you can only vote in your precinct. And usually, a lot of places, there's combined precincts, but you have, um, you, you can vote only in your precinct voting location on voting day. That's also where the precinct convention will be held. So what is a precinct convention? Many of you know, so this is the part where those of you who've done this for years might want to take out your phones and check your email. For those that haven't, the precinct conventions usually are run by the precinct chair, don't always have to be. Um, in fact, you could show up and you could be the one that runs your precinct convention. You could do that even if there's a precinct chair there doing the election judge work because they may not have time to go do it. They may still be doing what they have to do to wrap up all that. So it's really simple. You show up, there will be a packet that tells you exactly what to do, step by step, how to do things. And what you can do there is bring resolutions. And so some people hear resolutions and they think, oh gosh, this is going to go on forever. Nobody cares. Nobody pays attention. Well, what if nobody showed up to write property tax reform resolutions? What if there was one in the whole state? Well, then people wouldn't think it was that big a deal. We need to get all this stuff out there. And just because we've passed resolutions for 25 years or 35 years saying we are against abortion and we want all abortions banned, doesn't mean we stop doing it. We keep doing it until the day there are no abortions in the state of Texas or in America. Okay? So go to the precinct convention, run it, bring a friend, bring multiple friends, and you can have your resolutions passed. But the main reason to go to the precinct convention is so you get your name to be able to go to the state convention. Excuse me, to the Senate District Convention. So the Senate District Conventions will take place this year on March 24th at 9 a.m. So that will be after the primary election but before the runoff. And here is where those will be. Senate District 9 will be at North Richland Hills Baptist Church. Senate District 10 will be at the downtown Fort Worth Sheraton Hotel. Senate District 22 is still to be determined. And Senate District 12 at one of the finest churches in all of Tarrant County, First Baptist Grapevine. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, so I, hear they have, I hear they have great deacons on there. So, um, anyway, so that's where the four Senate District Conventions will be. That is going to be on March 24th. At the Senate District Conventions, those um, the precinct conventions, and literally sometimes you're in and out of the precinct convention in five minutes. Depending on how many resolutions are brought and how many people are there, sometimes there will be a precinct convention where you're the only one at the precinct convention. So your resolutions will hopefully will pass. Uh, if that's the case, if not, you probably need to work on the wording a little better. Uh, the, uh, sometimes it's one, two people, three people, and those go by pretty quick. Senate district conventions, not so much. Um, those can take a while. And so I've heard um, lots of people say, these things are a beating, they are so boring. And the reality is, whether it's the Senate district convention or the state convention, you can probably squeeze everything they do there into three hours instead of seven, or three hours instead of three days, you probably could. But that doesn't leave the time for the relationships, the building of that, that doesn't leave a lot of time for the socializing, which that's a big part of it too. There's nothing wrong with Republicans having fun, and we ought to have fun. 
And this group does a great job of having fun and movie nights and all the different things that, that Julie and Fred do. And I think it's fantastic. We need to probably have a little more fun instead of just always seeing the bickering going back and forth between each other. We need to do more of that. And that's what these conventions give you a chance to do. So Senate District Convention, you're going to um, vote on resolution. You're going to pass rules. You're going to elect the temporary chair to be the chair if it's left most times. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Here are your um, Senate District temporary chairs. For Senate District 9, it's Ann Gebhardt. Senate District 10, it's Kay Moreno. Senate District 12, it's Kirk Peterson. And Senate District 22, it is Don Horton. So you'll go to the Senate District Convention, you'll either elect them to be permanent Senate District Chair, or you'll find someone else. You'll vote on the rules to conduct that, and then you'll vote on resolutions. Uh, and then that's your gateway to go to the state convention. So people ask, do you have to go to these things to get to go to the state convention? The answer is no, you don't have to. But I think you should. And for some of these um, Senate districts, there's a lot of people that want to go and they don't always get to see everybody as a delegate initially. Now, you can also go as an alternate and almost without fail, if you go as an alternate, you get seated and you get to vote. It's pretty uncommon that that doesn't happen. But I will tell you, I think it's very important to go to the Senate District Convention and the Precinct Convention. Your resolutions that you pass at the Precinct Convention go to the Senate District. They're going to have a platform or a resolutions committee that is going to vote on those things, maybe massage a little bit, and then present them to you to vote on. So it's, it's a way to be heard. It's a way to make your voices known. And the more of us, the more of you that we have here, the better our resolutions will be, and ultimately the stronger our platform will be, which is important, and it's growing in importance every year. More and more people are talking about the platform, and it's just like anything else. I, as a guy that has run a couple of businesses, we want to change something. We can change. We change it today, and we start doing it different. Unfortunately, in politics, sometimes it just takes an awfully long time to get an idea off the ground. And the platform is something that, you know, ten years ago, I'm not sure anybody talked about the platform, and certainly if they did, nobody read it. Now people are reading it. I mean, it's amazing. If I had asked this question somewhere ten years ago, how many of you ever read the platform? Most of the hands would have gone up and said, "What's the platform?" Here, just about everybody had raised their hands and they read it, which is amazing. So the platform is going to matter more and more. And as we're battling people for property tax reform and abortion and for fiscal sanity, the platform is going to be the key to hold these folks accountable. And, uh, and so that's why it's important to go. I would encourage you to bring your own resolutions to the precinct conventions. I would encourage you to spend some time writing them. And a key to getting it passed is write it well. It doesn't have to be 100 pages long. In fact, if it's short, sweet, the better. Put a little meat into it, but write it well, make sure it's well edited, and have plenty of copies to pass out when you go there. And that's how you get your resolutions passed. So with that, I think we have a few minutes um, this is how to do it, how to get involved, where to go. Anybody have any questions about the convention process that I didn't touch on? Yes? Is the platform like, completely scrapped and rewritten every two years? Or is it basically kept the same and we maybe add some more new resolutions on? Well, I would say they write a new one each year, but if there is always, as you might guess, tons of carryover. So they don't just take the one that's sitting there and stick it, although they may use that as a base to go off of. You'll see a lot of the same things. Last year, I forget, James, you could probably tell me, the platform would have like 147 things in it. I mean, it was incredibly lengthy. The talk has been, we need to shrink this down and, and instead of just having all these millions of things, but all these things give everybody a chance to vote you know, line by line. We'll see where that goes, how that happens. Oh, excuse, I didn't mention this. So if you want to serve on one of these committees at the state convention, 
How it's picked is your SREC representatives pick a member for each committee, and they have to agree on it. So, for example, my Senate district, Senate District 9, um, the two SREC representatives are Steve Atwell and Shelley Pritchard. So if I said, hey, I want to serve on the resolutions committee, if both of them agree to put me on it, I'm on it. If they can't agree for some reason, then the state chair picks it. So if you're interested in doing that or serving on the Senate district, those four people I gave you um, for your Senate district, or each one for your Senate district, call them and tell them you want to serve on, this, on the Senate district convention rules committee or resolutions committee. So good question. It looks like we might have time maybe for one more, Fran. Two more. Two questions. Two questions, okay. Tell us what happens if you show up to your precinct convention and your precinct doesn't have a chairperson. Yeah, so if you show up to a precinct convention, where there is an election, they will have a precinct convention packet, whether there's a precinct chair there or not. And basically, usually the way it works out is first one to grab it ends up being the chair if you want to be because people are game for you to run it. So there will be a packet at every single precinct location in Tarrant County. You go there, you get that packet, and it tells you exactly what to do. And it certainly does not have to be a precinct chair. You will actually elect the precinct convention chair. Good question. Second question. And you're talking about for the GOP executive committee? Yes. Yes. So her question, if you didn't hear it, is there a way if you don't have a precinct chair in your precinct to have someone appointed? And yes, there is. The way that you do that is you call GOP headquarters, uh, ask for Jeremy, submit an application. There's a couple of requirements that you obviously have to live in your precinct, uh, that you're not a Democrat, you know, things like that. And <laughs> Uh, he'll you fill out the application. He'll run you, make sure you're eligible, and then you have to have someone nominate you at the executive committee meeting. Normally, that's done. Eh, I don't say normally. Fairly often, it's done by the area leader for your house district. So Darrell is currently an area leader. He can also kind of walk you through how you do that. But you can pick up the phone, call your area leader, hey, I submitted an application. I want to be a precinct chair. If you do that, a precinct chair. We have two more meetings in this term, March 11th and then uh, sometime in May. So you would, you would be seated as a precinct chair for the remainder of this term, which ends in June. Then there's an organizational meeting in June or July that Gadar will call. If nobody's on the ballot, then there's a very good chance you would be reappointed come Darrell's organizational meeting. So, all right, one more question. Several of us work a poll on election day that's not our precinct, mm -hmm. and we can't get to those precinct meetings. What's the workaround for us? <clears throat> Gotta have a friend, right? You, you know what? What I would do is pick up the phone and call your Senate district chair for temporary chair, explain the scenario, and then, or talk to someone that's going to the precinct convention and ask them to put your name on the list. But if you call the Senate District uh, Temporary Chair, I'm sure they'll, they'll work with you on that. Okay. All right. Thank you all for letting me be here. God bless you for all of you.